Hello and welcome to a lesson on the perimeter and area of compound shapes. A compound shape is a shape made up of simpler shapes. And we're going to be looking at the perimeter and area of shapes that can be made up from rectangles. So let's begin by reminding ourselves about the perimeter and area of a rectangle. I've got a little example here that's let's say three centimeters long and two centimeters wide. The perimeter means the distance around the outside. So let me just put a dot there and we'll start counting from there. We've got three centimeters plus two centimeters plus another three centimeters plus another two centimeters. So I've got three plus two plus three plus two, which means it's 10 centimeters all the way around the rectangle. Now the area is about tile in the floor. What's how many tiles would we need if there were one centimeter square each for this, this diagram of a floor? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six centimeters squared. Is there a way we can calculate that rather than count it? Well, I've got two rows of three or three columns of two. So the area is three times two, which is six. But what about the units? They're no longer in centimeters. They're in centimeters squared or square centimeters. So we write that as six centimeters squared. What about a more general rectangle? Let's say this one is length L, L for length. And let's say that its width is W. What would the perimeter of that rectangle be? Well, we'll have L add W add L add W. So let me put another L there and another W there. So the perimeter would be L add W add L add W. Or I could write that as two lots of L plus two lots of W. The area, much like we did here, three times two, the area will be given by the length times the width. So the area is the length times the width. Right, so now we've looked at a rectangle. We're going to move on now to look at compound shapes. We we'll begin with this L shape and first we'll find its perimeter. So let me put a dot in the top left hand corner where I'm going to start measuring from. I've got three meters, then I've got an unknown distance. Four meters, two meters, then an unknown distance, then 10 meters. So clearly I'll have to work out these unknown distances before we can find the perimeter. Well, if that's 10 all the way down there, and that is two up to there, what will that be? It'll be the difference between them. We'll need eight plus another two to get to 10. So this distance here is eight meters. What about this distance here? Well, I know it's four from there to there, and I know it's three from there to there, so this must be four plus three, seven meters altogether. And that's an important skill in itself, being able to find the missing sides in a shape. Sometimes we might have to add two numbers together, four plus the three. Other times we might have to do some subtraction. Ten, take away that two, leaves you that eight. Right, let's write down the perimeter, starting from the red dot and going clockwise. I've got three plus eight plus four plus two plus seven, plus 10. Let's just check we've got the right amount of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they're all there. Three add eight is 11. 11 add four is 15. 15 add two is 17. 17 add seven is 24. 24 add 10 is 34. So the perimeter is 34. 34 what? 34 meters because all the measurements are in meters and the perimeter is a length. It's the length all the way around the shape. It tells you how much string you'd need to put all the way around the shape. 
Right, now let's look at the area. And we're actually going to do this question three times, three different ways. I want to break this into rectangles, so how might I do it? Well, one way would be to come, come down here, put a dotted line down here, call this one A and this one B. So if I find the area of A and I find the area of B and add them together, I'll have the area of the whole L shape. So, first of all, A is equal to what? Well, it's a rectangle, so to find its area, it's length times width. Its length is 10 and the width is 3. So the area is 10 times 3, which is 30. And they will actually be in metres squared, but we'll put that on at the end. B, the length is 4 and the width is 2. So B is 4 times 2, which is 8. Which means that the total area is given by 30 plus 8, 38, and the units will be in metres squared if all the measurements are in metres. So this L shape has perimeter 34 metres and area 38 metres squared. Let's go on and look at the same problem again. We won't find the perimeter again because we would do that in exactly the same way. But what I'm going to do to find the area is show you that we didn't have to split it down there. We could have split it a different way, across here, for instance. And let's say I call that rectangle C and that rectangle D. So I'm going to find the area of C, find the area of D, and add them together. Now then, C is not 10 by 3, because 10 goes all the way down at the bottom. So I need this measurement here, which we've already found once in the previous page. And that was 8 metres, because it was the 10 down to the bottom take off that 2. So C is 8 metres long and 3 metres wide, so I can write that C is equal to 8 times 3, which is 24 metres squared. What about D? Well, again, for D, I need to know this length, which we found before. It was the 4 from there to there, plus the 3 from there to there, so it was 7 metres long. So D is 7 metres long, 2 metres wide, so the area is 7 times 2, which is 14 metres squared. And now when we find the total area, we find that 24 plus 14 is 38 metres squared. If I take you back to the previous page, you'll see that's the same answer as we got split in a different way, which is just as well because the L shape can only have one area however we decide to find it. One more look at this example. What if I chose, instead of cutting it up, if I chose to extend it? Let's put a dotted line in across there and down here to make another rectangle. So this bit here is not really part of the L shape I'm trying to find. So what I could do is find the area of this large rectangle. Then I could find the area of this small rectangle and take it away from the large rectangle. And what would I be left with? I'd be left with the L shape that I want. So I'm going to need these measurements again. That's going to be 8 metres we found. And that's going to be 7 metres. Now then, the area. The large rectangle is 10 metres by 7 metres, so it's 10 times 7, which is 70 metres squared. And the small rectangle is 8 times 4. Eight fours are 32. Again, they'll be in metres squared. But this time, to get the L shape, I don't add them together. I subtract. I take the small rectangle away from the large one. 
and 70 take away 32 is 38 metres squared. So again, we've got that same answer, 38 metres squared. There's not a right way and a wrong way to do it. You choose whichever way seems more suitable at the time. We look at two more examples. The first of these is a sort of T shape. And we're going to find the perimeter and area. Now my advice is always draw a diagram. Even if it's on the question paper, draw yourself a diagram and mark on all the lengths of the sides, the ones they give you and the ones that you can find yourself. So for instance, I need that distance there. I'm going to build that up. I can see that it's four from there to there. It's three across there. I know that by looking at the bottom. And then it's two from there to there. So the whole length is going to be four, add three, add two. Four, add three, seven, add two more is nine. So that's nine meters along the top. Any other distances I don't know? Well, that one there is going to be two meters because it's it's just opposite the same as that. And it's the same width all the way along. That there is going to be eight meters because it's opposite this length here. Right, I've got everything I need now to find the perimeter. The perimeter is going to be nine plus two plus four plus eight plus three plus eight plus two plus two. I'm just going to check I've got the right amount of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how many edges this shape has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, got them all. What do they add up to? Nine add two is 11. 11 add four is 15. 15 add eight is 23. Three more makes 26. Eight more makes 34. Two more makes 36 and two more makes 38. So the perimeter around the T-shape will be 38 metres. Remember it's a length perimeter, so it's in the same units as all the lengths given around the various sides. Now for the area, this time there's one obvious way to split it, and that's across here. I could split it down there and down there and make three rectangles, but why bother with three when I can do it with two? So if I put a dotted line across there, and we'll call this one A and this one B. So for the area, A is equal to, I've already found the length working on the perimeter, it's nine and the width is two, so that's just nine times two, which is 18 meters squared. And for B, it's eight long and three wide, so eight times three, 24. And I just need to add those together to find the total area of the T-shape. 8 and 4 is 12, carry the 1, 1 and 2 is 3 and 1 is 4, so we've got 42 and the units, meters squared. Square measure area, always going to have something squared. Could be centimeters squared if the lengths are given in centimeters, kilometers squared if the lengths were given in kilometers, or meter squared as we have here. Right, we'll move on now to the last example. A bit more complicated, I've got an H shape this time. We'll start counting from this top corner again, and first we'll write on the missing measurements. So that's three, so I can write three there. If that one's four down there, that will be four as well. If that's three across there, and that will also be three. All the measurements are in meters. I've got a three here, so there'll be a three at the top. 10 down there. Four miss missing here, so I'll put that in. And finally a 10 missing up the side. Right, so the perimeter is starting top left hand corner. We have three plus four plus three plus four, plus three, plus ten, plus three, plus four, plus three, plus four, plus three, plus ten, and I'm back to the red dot where I started. Let's just check we've got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12 numbers I should have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the top row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the bottom row. So I've got my 12 numbers. Just need to add them together. 3 add 4 7. 7 and 3 is 10. Add 4 14. Add 3 17. Add 10 27. Add 3 30. Add 4 34. Add 3 37. Add 4 41. Add 3 44. Add 10 54. So it's 54 metres around the perimeter of this edge shape. Right, now to find the area. Well, the obvious way to split this is into three rectangles like that. Let's call them C, D, and I'll call the middle one E. Now I can see that C and D are the same. They're both 10 meters long and three meters wide. So C is 10 meters long, three meters wide, 10 times three is 30. D is exactly the same, 10 times 3, which is 30. And what about E? Well, I can see it's 3 metres along there, but I don't know this distance here at the moment. Well, what have we got? We've got the whole length is 10 from top to bottom. I know that that bit's 4, that bit's 4, so the missing bit must be the other 2 to make up the 10. 4 add 2 add 4 would add up to 10. So E is actually 3 times 2, which is 6. And if I add all three rectangles together, I'll have the total for the eighth shape, which would be 66 metres squared. So that example threw up somewhere where we had to do a bit of calculation. You know, very tempting to say that E was three times three because you can see two threes there, but that would be wrong. You needed to calculate that width from information on the diagram. Right, that concludes our lesson on the perimeter and area of compound shapes. Now have a go at the associated exercise.